all right folks in this section we are going to talk about data modeling okay so database design data modeling schema design these are all interchangeable words terms well database design is an ongoing process so you come up with a basic design when you sort of like create your application and then as the application you know gets added new features enhancements improvements you basically iterate over this design right you keep adding new things to your design and so on so the first thing that you do when you're doing database design or data modeling is understand business data and then once you understand business data you have to come up with a logical design of your database what do i mean by that well basically you have to design your tables uh, the columns that goes into those tables indexes constraints like primary key constraint unique key constraint uh, not null constraints default values foreign keys like these are all various things that you need to create uh, when you when you come up with a logical design of your schema once you actually have this basic uh, table design or schema design then you can look for data redundancy that is basically you see where your data is repetitive and then you start eliminating it by normalizing your tables actually and that's because data redundancy causes data anomalies what I mean by that is when you have like multiple occurrences of the same data when you are let's say updating certain data you have to update in many places and if you forget to update even one place now you you have two versions of the same data in your database and that creates the data anomaly data inconsistency is along the same lines actually and all that happens because of data redundancy so what we are looking at is basically a spreadsheet and a spreadsheet is basically a huge table a large table right and uh, and what what we are going to do is basically design a table for a e-commerce website an e-commerce website is basically like an amazon or ebay or whatever like online uh, business like right? online e-commerce website like alibaba or whatever right let's say like you have only one table in this database right and you start as the orders come in through this website you start putting data into this table right you have uh, you know let's look at some of the things that you will record in this table right you obviously need like a count of your orders so you might like numbering your orders and then how it is coming like you know is it desktop or mobile or what product is it like you know here I have got like a couple of books and then book titles and then the price of the products and then who is the customer customers details payment details delivery details and so on so these are all part of like uh, e-commerce uh, world basically right and you have one giant table and if you look at the data here right so you know here I've got like a couple of customers buying uh, you know sort of like two different prod products right so and you can see that the data has in been repetitive what I mean by that is like every time I buy the same product I have to repeat this data like the first order that came in was through the web uh, desktop website and it was bought by Bharat and then you can see all the details of this customer and, uh, and all the details about the product and the payment uh, payment details as well and then the second order that came was from a different person but then it was you know the the order was for the same product and you had to repeat the product information right and then third was from the previous customer but then this time he bought, bought a different product the, this information the customer information has repeated actually so there is a lot of data redundancy data has been repetitive so this is basically a denormalized database 
where you have only one table or handful of tables we pack all the information from your website or your business into these few tables actually this is a denormalized version of your database let's actually go look at what else you could do so what you can do is uh, basically you can start with this basic denormalized table and then you can start taking out all the redundant information out of your database or your table actually right first thing i did was i took out like the customer information and i put it in a separate table right and I've got only customer details here and I started like putting a ID number for each customer right or a customer number whatever you call it once I take out the customer information I have the orders table the initial table I'm calling orders table looking like this now right and you can see that uh, I've got like customer ID column over here and what is this customer ID column your guess is right. So this customer ID column is the same as what you see over here, right? So, and why do I have that? Because I, I need a way to relate these rows, as you can tell, like, you know, these are columns, these are rows, these rows, I need to be able to relate to a customer, right? If I take out customer information, then how can I relate, you know, this table and that table? It's through a common column uh, or a bunch of columns actually. In this case, it's just one column. So customer ID, right? I'm just like putting the ID number over here and what else actually we can take out of this table. So this is one level of normalization, right? So let's keep normalizing, which is like take out the product details, right? So product details are also repeating. So here you don't feel that much pain because there's only three records in this table. What if the table has million records, right? This is why we need to normalize the table. Now you actually take out the product information and move it to a different table. And then I have a product ID column just to number, like ID the products actually. And your orders table will look like this. Then you take out the payment information to a different table and your orders table will then look like this. This is basically the process of going from a denormalized schema or a database to a normalized database. When you have your data in a single table, then you don't need to do any joins. So you might ask actually, what are joins actually? When you're running queries, like using SQL, SQL is a language, right? A structured query language. When you're running commands in your database, you, you can get all your data from this one table if your tab database is totally denormalized. Whereas if you have many tables, you need to sort of combine or join these tables and then you have to get the data out. So that is called joining the tables. So when you have a denormalized database, you don't have to do many joins. And that is kind of good in a way because your database doesn't have to think that much to get the data. You say, I want this data and this data is available in this table. So it's just very straightforward. Whereas like in a, in a normalized database, when you join many tables, then your database engine, which, which they call optimizer in, um, in uh, Oracle or in most of, the most of the databases. So this database engine has to think more as in like, okay, which table should I scan first? And how should I filter the data in this table? And then, okay, I take the result set from that table and I have to join with these other tables. So there is so much more thinking. There's so much more uh, processing that has to happen on whichever server this database is running on, right? And because of that, the performance will be kind of like slower, right? Uh, it, and it will consume a lot of resources and you have all that happening at scale as in like many operations are happening at the same time then you basically have slow performance actually or at least slower than what it would have been in a denormalized database but at the same time we are removing so much data repetition or data redundancy is very low because of that the storage needed in a normalized database is much lower so you cannot actually like generalize and say a normalized database will always be slow 
or denormalized database will be fast. It, it is all like it depends actually. You have to look at the data and see how much repetition is happening, etc. etc. So, but generally, this is how it goes. As you go through this design process, right, you know, see what we have done actually, right? So, we have decided then the tables that we need, like, you know, we have order stable products, cu customers, and payments, and we decide the column names. And then not just that, for each table, you need to uh, decide actually what will be the primary key. What I mean by that as a primary key is, is a unique key and which cannot be null actually, which is very important. So using this primary key, you should be able to identify any record in this table, any row in this table. For example, if I say here, the primary key is order number, then I can Anytime if I have an order number, then I can look up this table. Let's say order number equals two. I can just get this record out of uh, my database. And then you need to also have like some unique keys actually, right? So unique keys is pretty much like primary key and um, a unique key can be null. A primary key cannot be null as I mentioned. Uh, and then you can also have indexes on your table. So indexes are ways to basically select your day, uh, data faster. Let's say that I often search this table based on customer's email. Then I need an index on uh, customer email column, right? You need to decide that. And you need to decide uh, about which columns can be null, right? Here, none of the columns can be null. Let's say you have uh, another column called preference, right? A customer preference as in what kind of shipping or what kind of or which phone number is preferred or something like that so that can be a null column right so you can have null columns otherwise you define your columns as not null let's say like in your orders table you have this delivered column when an order is basically created when a customer buys a product on your website of course it's not delivered immediately at the time of order creation the delivered column will always have no or n, a, n value, right? All these things, all these decisions that we are making, we are talking about, is part of schema design. And once you have all this figured out, you can put the information in a ER design tool, entity relationship design tool. And in the next section, I will show you how I do that on SQL Workbench. Uh, MySQL Workbench basically. You can actually then have a pictorial representation of your logical design of your database, right? And that's basically what you call an ER diagram. And of course, you can talk about uh, the relationship between like two tables, let's say. You can say, oh, this table and this table, they have one to many relationship. For example, each customer can place many orders. So that is actually a one to many relationship, right? But one, you know, uh, one order can be done by only one customer, right? So, so that kind of thing. So you have one to one relationship, one to many relationship or many to many relationship between tables actually. These are all part of uh, data modeling. But you don't need to be worried so much about that. As long as you have clear idea of like what data is coming into your database and along the way you need to define like the data type of your columns actually that is very important your names are going to be a, a var char you know phone numbers can be numbers and then email is again like a var char and your id column or number columns are going to be int or number these are all some decisions that you would make in uh, a data modeling uh, task actually that's pretty much what I want to say about data modeling um, and there's much more we can talk about it and like atomicity like you you have all the address sort of like attributes packed into one uh, column we we need to split that as well so that is called atomicity you can have address separately, city separately, state separately, and you know zip code separately, right? Uh, so those kinds of things. There are nuances that make your database more and more efficient. 
and of course we're not going to go into a lot of details there but this is the basic data modeling that you need to understand and as I said before in the next section I will show you how to take this and then input that on MySQL workbench